When you set off around the world, you take with you everything that you need for your survival. So for three, three and a half months, you're on a boat with everything that you have. You know that you only have so much food, you only have so much diesel, and you become incredibly connected to those resources that you use. And as you watch those resources go down, you realize just what finite means. Because in the Southern Ocean, you're two and a half thousand miles away from the nearest town, there, there is no more, you can't stop and collect more. And I'd never made that translation to anything other than sailing. But suddenly I realised our global economy is no different. It's powered on resources which are ultimately finite. And I suddenly realised that there was a much greater challenge out there than sailing around the world, which was in fact trying to find a global economy that could function in the long term. The best way to illustrate a circular economy is to look at our current linear economy. Our economy today is predominantly um, driven through taking a material out of the ground, making something out of it, and ultimately that material, that product, gets thrown away. Within a circular economy, from the outset, you design the economy to be regenerative. So you design a car for remanufacture, you design a car for disassembly, for decomponentization. So the materials that sit within the global economy that currently flow at the, off the end of the conveyor belt can go back in, which involves everything from different financing of those products and materials to different business models, through do we sell, do, do people pay per use for those materials. If you can understand what a circular economy is, if you set that as the goal, then you know that every decision that you make within your business can take you one stage closer to that point. That's very much like sailing, because in sailing it's not just the speed of the boat, it's the construction of the boat, it's whether you've got everything in the first aid kit, it's the weather the boat's sitting in, is it the water the boat's sitting in, what's happening to the water, what's happening to the icebergs, what's happening to the weather, what effects that having on everything else. You have to look at the big picture because the moment you focus on the immediate, it's all over. When commodities become more expensive, as they have been doing over the last 10 years, the solution has often been, let's put less material in the product. But ultimately, you get to a point where you can't recover that material because it's in such small quantities in that product that you can no longer get it back. Actually, within a circular economy, you may use reverse logic. You may say, we'll put more of that material in and we'll design it in a way so we know we can get that material back because we will ultimately have a material flow which includes that product coming back to us to be remanufactured or disassembled. So in our current economy we have different levels of quality of washing machines that we could buy. You would have your lower end machine which is designed to do about 2,000 washes which will cost you about 27 cents a wash. Your high end machine which evidently costs more to buy up front with more research and development, more materials within it that will cost you 12 cents a wash. Within a circular economy, what we'd, you would allow is everybody to have access to that higher end machine that only costs 12 cents a wash because the manufacturer designs it so they get that machine back. They look after it, you pay per wash. You don't buy the machine up front. So you don't have to pay tax when you buy it. You don't have to pay landfill tax when you throw it away. And the manufacturer, through changing the system, guarantees they can get that machine back so they can upgrade it, they can repair it. Uh, they can put it back into their system to recover the raw materials for the machines of the future. You change the entire economic system, the manufacturer makes a third more profit and the user pays significantly less for a better product. Obviously our goal at the foundation is to accelerate the transition towards a circular economy, so we've put short-term goals within that, such as building a programme for 100 companies including regions and emerging innovators, to start to unlock the opportunity of the circular economy through collaboration, through working together, through looking at legislation. I think there's a massive opportunity for emerging markets in this space. And to think that you have the opportunity to lock into a circular model rather than a linear model, that's a, that's a huge economic opportunity. To think that users of those products can have a better product at less, for less money, that product can ultimately re return creating employment in the remanufacturing or the decomponentization of the product and then ultimately the manufacturer makes more money because they know they get that component back. That, for an emerging market, is incredible. It allows them to leapfrog our system and gain even more advantage.